If you were a Jew during the time of Moses, you might find yourself participating in a local weekend stoning, whereas you are now a part of a mob throwing rocks with the intent to kill the next door neighbor lady who couldn't prove her virginity on her wedding night. But if you live here in the modern world where secularism has been dominating, you most likely have a more empathetic and compassionate set of morals. Some would argue that human morality has reached its highest point, whereas most people have more empathy for others compared to any other time in world history. Ironically, I have had Christians ask me, if you don't believe in the God of the Bible, what keeps you from raping, murdering, and pillaging? Really? This question only causes me to wonder, what kind of an evil mind am I dealing with here? What is most ironic is if you actually open up and read the Bible, it is God's chosen people who were raping, murdering, and pillaging. What they are trying to imply is that non-believers, or people who don't believe in God, at their core are bad people who want to run around hurting others. They say this as if, if we didn't have the Christian Bible, the world would plummet into chaos. This is not at all the case anywhere on earth. I can speak from personal experience that not having any religion does not make me believe my actions don't have consequences. In fact, contrary to this, losing my religion has created a notable change in my morality, opposite from what believers might imagine. Once I had fully divorced Christianity, my heart grew ten sizes bigger. I became more sensitive to my actions. Huh? you might ask? Well, let me explain. I once believed Jesus died on a cross for all of my wrongs because I was bound to my naturally inherited sinful nature. Jesus had me covered, so I really didn't have to worry so much about my actions or others because I am a sinner and this place is destitute. Jesus will be back soon to destroy almost everybody and everything in it. I just need to wait for his return and believe. With this belief in my mind, I leaned toward a lazy morality and concerned myself less with people, animals, and this planet. I didn't realize then how much Christianity poisoned my mind, but I do now. Today, I do not have this illusion in my life and feel that when I do something wrong or hurt somebody, I am actually accountable for my actions. I don't have a get out of jail free card anymore. So my actions have begun to reflect that realization. Such an increase of awareness and empathy has even extended out into the animal kingdom where I am now an activist for stopping animal abuse and support organizations such as Mercy for Animals. Because I believe in kindness as often as it can be issued, regardless of how big or small a living entity is. I was never this hypersensitive with empathy while I was a Christian. This leads me to a big question. Just how morally advanced do believers think they are from the rest of us? A number of years ago, a national conference for church directors was held at a major city in the Midwest. Pastors flooded into a hotel and occupied nearly every room. The hotel manager later revealed to the conference administrator that the number of guests who tuned into the adult porn channel 
broke the record over any other convention in its history. This story blew up in 2001 and was published in a popular Christian book titled Finishing Strong. I have discovered through personal experience that the majority of Christians who talk the talk rarely walk the walk. The truth is, the average believer does not operate any different from the average non-believer, and sometimes frightfully worse. You see, when you try to suppress something as natural as sexual desire, you end up with the opposite result you are trying to achieve. Christians may become even more obsessed with sex than that of someone who thinks it's natural and normal. In fact, sexual suppression just might be a catalyst for perversion. I recently saw a news article that read, April 2nd, 2016, 12 reported incidents of Christian pastors molesting kids in just the last month. It would seem to me as though Christian pastors who are raping children has become an epidemic these days. These cases come across my desk nearly on a weekly basis. Derek Hampsch, a youth pastor at a First Baptist Church in 2010, molested a 14-year-old girl in a church closet. In Pekin, Illinois, Nicholas Lawrence, a pastor for three Protestant churches, pleaded to four felony accounts of a sexual relationship with a 12-year-old. Folks, these cases just keep piling up, and I have a theory for why this is happening. For some believers, a Christian faith might unintentionally be providing them with an excuse to act out on their bad behaviors. You see, a belief that somebody else has paid for your transgressions might cause some believers to be less concerned for their actions. Christians believe they are born sinful and have inherited the sinful nature. Therefore, Jesus steps in to forgive them of what they have no power over. It might become a little too convenient for some of these believers to simply say, I am a sinner, as a way to give in to their immoral desires. A large number of Christians believe they will not be held accountable for these bad actions so long as they keep believing in Jesus. Jesus understands these temptations and has intervened to provide the forgiveness they will need. This scapegoat ideology is likely to be the core reason why so many pastors are not feeling a sense that they must refrain from some of these horrible actions therefore resulting in the raping or molesting of young children, even on church grounds. These folks are all about forgiveness. It's what they preach day after day. They might be getting so high on forgiveness that they lose accountability. As I gazed over the mugshot of one of these Christian pastors who had just been caught molesting children in his church, I began to wonder, how do you know if the Holy Ghost even lives inside of you, as the Bible says? Does this Holy Ghost change anything when it takes up residency? Why can't anyone tell the difference between who has the ghost and who doesn't? I would think that if somebody had part of this trinity or God's Holy Ghost thingy living in them, that there would be a notable difference, unless none of it is true. In my former 25 years of being a devout Christian, 
I have personally never experienced any difference in behavior, empathy, or morality between my believing friends and non-believing friends. Andy Rooney, a famous commentator, said it perfectly. Christians talk as though goodness was their idea, but good behavior doesn't have any religious origin. Our prisons are filled with the devout. I'd be more willing to accept religion, even if I don't believe it, if I thought it made people nicer to each other. But I don't think it does. I myself am no longer convinced that going to church will make anybody a better person. It seems to be more about convincing themselves they are forgiven and will not be held accountable for their ugly personality or actions. This, I believe, may not be a healthy moral standard or teaching. Perhaps we should start placing more focus on accountability for your actions. Stay strong and wise, my friends. I don't believe in masquerades. I don't believe that you're okay. I don't believe that God will save. Only you can solve your problems. I don't care what they sold you.